What is up, DGens? My name is Mize. Welcome back to my channel. And today, we are going to be talking about the Funimation and Crunchyroll merger. Yes, I think it was about a year, maybe a year, half ago now at this point. Funimation, or I don't know, to be fair, I don't know how long it was. I thought it was going to take longer. But apparently, Funimation and Crunchyroll are now together. Funimation is moving all of its content and everything like that into the Crunchyroll app. It's going to be there. Um, and yeah, this is just big news for the anime community for a whole lot of reasons. So how about we get into those particular reasons? Now, I think a lot of people in the anime community would have viewed this as kind of a bad thing due to the fact that with Funimation and Crunchyroll being the biggest apps to watch anime on, now that they're kind of merging together, a lot of people probably see this as a weird monopolization of anime and honestly, while there are, while there could be that potential problem, which we'll talk about later down in the video, I actually overall see this as a pretty good thing. First off, the majority of anime, like I said earlier in the video, is now on a singular app, which means we don't have to, we no longer have to pay for like two or three apps for us to watch all of the anime that comes on this single season. Because there's some that usually would come on Fun Nation, some that would usually come on Crunchyroll, and it made things just really confusing and stressful. But now. Everything's gonna be one app. So watching seasonal anime will actually be a lot easier to catch up. You don't have to have Funimation, you don't have to have Crunchyroll. You just really have to have Crunchyroll. I mean, I don't know what Funimation's purpose is gonna be at this point. I don't know if they plan on doing their own thing or if this is counting as some type of merger, but it's good to at least have a centralized place to watch all your anime. Now there's only one problem I probably have with this and that is that now that the other bigger competitor is pretty much with the other competition, the prices of the apps potentially may rise. Where Country Roll, they had the whole thing where you could pay like $9.99 a month where it's just like no ads, 480 pay $15.99 a month where you can get like better streaming stuff and I think you get offline moving. And then you get like the $20 price where you can get like the 4K viewing and the offline viewing and you get special discounts on their apps and manga and all that stuff. So that is particularly pretty cool, but we might see a raise in that price due to the fact that there's not really competition. But there is competition still, but again, we'll leave that for the later part of the video. Now, will the price be high? I don't potentially think so. I think it might see a slight bump. I don't think we're gonna see something like super egregious in hell. Because of this, they might actually do like a yearly thing where you can like pay yearly for the whole subscription and it'd be fine. I would be fine with that. I think a lot of people would enjoy that. That way you don't have, you know, the constantly reoccurring price every single month. You just do one flat fee for the whole year. Or maybe they do have that and I'm just completely forgetting about that. But I don't think this, the money thing is going to be a complete issue. I don't think they're going to gouge us, hopefully. I... I, I'm trying to be I'm trying to be optimistic money wise and I don't think that they're really willing to go that hard like I said before more into the video I discuss why and can I just say thank fucking god that they all moved to the Crunchyroll app because the Crunchyroll UI is so much more clean and able to use and it's just it's just perfect you know the frustration if you had Funimation before where their UI is just messy and disgusting it's simple but also boring and just not conducive to, conducive to really anything it's hard to find stuff on there the browsers are kind of weird it's a very difficult mess to go to so I'm glad that we are on the Crunchyroll UI because man, is that a really good UI. And as well, hopefully with this merger, we can see a very big improvement to dubs. Now I will admit, now that we've entered this new decade of anime and we're almost like fully into it, we're still two years into it, so we're still in the early stages, but dubs have been actually really good. A lot of the dubs have been pretty fun to watch and have been really well performed. Obviously, there's still a few outliers that may be a little shaky at times, but for the most part, dubs have improved. And what I'm hoping is that with the Funimation Crunch Mold merger, that dub progression will also keep going in towards the upper direction of progress. 
That was a lot of just jumbled words, but basically what I'm trying to say is, I hope things get better. I hope that with Crunchyroll and Funimation merging, we can finally get a like really super high quality of dubs out there, hiring the best people to play the best roles and to just put that all out there and just make that all fun. So yeah, there are actually a lot of really good things when it comes to this merger. But the question that's on my mind and probably on a few people's minds is what is going to happen to the other apps that have other anime content on there as well? And honestly, one of the apps I want to talk about, which to me seems the most interesting, is Verb. Because remember, this is not the first time we've had Funimation and Crunchyroll conjoin content on a single app. Verb was the first place that this happened. Back when this came out in 2016, Verb was the app to be on. It had so much selection and so much content on it. And as it just kept going over the years, at least on like the first few years of its inception, it was a really good app. And it had a lot of options to choose from when it comes to content. Like just to name a few of the options that weren't Funimation and Crunchyroll, you had Rooster Teeth, you had Boomerang, you had CISO, you had the Federator Network, you had all these really good apps and channels and so much more just converging on one space. This app wasn't just an app to combine anime, this was an app to combine all animation. And for a while, it was dominant, it was great, it was one of the best apps to have for a very long time if you wanted the most animated content and a lot of good things came out from this app as well even when funimation left and went back on its own crunchyroll and verb brought in high dive which was also a really good company that made really good dubs so they still had a lot of things going for it just it kind of fell off on the later years one of the things i think led to the downfall was just people constantly leaving and going you had people like Funimation and Federator and Boomerang, Rooster Teeth that was just coming and going. There was just other people that they tried to add, but they didn't last long. They would last about maybe six months, maybe a year, and like at the maximum two years until they ended up leaving. It was kind of a mess, honestly, for the most part in the later years. And eventually High Dive left, and I think that was just the nail in the coffin. Because after that, all they had was Crunchyroll, Mondo, and the Verb Select. And that's what's currently on there right now. There's not much. And honestly, yeah, they still have the Crunchyroll stuff. But if you don't watch anything from the Mondo stuff, which don't get me wrong, Last Man and Cat Agent and Greg and His Demons, those are some really good stuff on there. But if you're not into any of that stuff and you're not really into any of the Verb Select stuff, there's not really a reason to keep the app. Might as well just go to Crunchyroll. Hell, that's what I did a few months ago. I just stopped using Verb and I went back to Crunchyroll because there was no reason. I was only watching Crunchyroll content on Verb. Might as well just go to Crunchyroll at that point. And I kind of think that's what other people did. I think people saw the content just fleeting and people leaving more faster than they could put on content into the app. And honestly, with the constant change of content and then the dwindling of less and less I, it's more people just didn't see it lucrative honestly even when i bring up verve i think i was one of the only people of my friends that only had verve still and i was just kind of done with it at that point my apologies if this turned into a weird verve history lesson but i think it's really important to understand where this all started and where this came from remember this isn't the first time like i said that crunchyroll and Funimation are together on a single app. But I will say that it is in different standards. Funimation and Crunchyroll were partnered at the time, while this is Sony just buying both the contents and just putting it in one app and making it easier. So we're not gonna expect Funimation to leave anytime soon or ever at this point, honestly. But with Verb being the most interesting one out of the way, what else is, is there for anime content? Well, I know Hulu and HBO Max have some anime content and I'm not gonna lie, with everything being centralized in the Crunchyroll app, I wouldn't be surprised if Hulu and HBO just move away from anime. I think Hulu's gonna more focus on its own original since it's really popular, and honest to god, HBO Max is stacked with so much shit, they truly don't need the anime 
at all. They have the animation side covered with all the Cartoon Network stuff and other little things it's doing, along with just being the place where you can watch movies released on the same day to enter theaters. So, you know what? I think HBO, Max, and Hulu are going to be perfectly fine. Though the other app that interests me very particularly in this conversation is Netflix. Now, Netflix is in a weird special place. Yes, it does have anime that is not made from them, but they also have original content. And that is the thing that's going to make them potentially stand out from Funimation Crunchyroll, which is why I think this doesn't necessarily count as a monopolization of anime. At least in the West, sure. Funimation and Crunchyroll is going to be the centralized place where you can watch anime, but Netflix is still going to have a lot of its originals, and more often than not, those originals are going to be bangers. I mean, come on. We got Agrisuko, Violet Evergarden, we have BNA, we have Castlevania, we have Beastars. They have a really good lineup of stuff, The Great Pretenders one, a really good lineup of stuff that is really good and honestly, like, some of the best anime that's come out in a while. True, it has its duds, it has its problems, it has its misses, but more often than not, Netflix knows how to hit stuff, and its originals are pretty big bangers. Netflix is now going to be the direct rival. It's not, it's no longer Federation and Crunchyroll. They've joined forces, now, it's Funimation and Crunchyroll, or I guess in this case just Crunchyroll, against Netflix. We're entering a new era of the anime streaming wars, and I'm very interested to see where it goes, because now Netflix has to step up the game. They can't be doing all these big misses. They gotta hit the mark 9 out of 10 times, which means they gotta get really serious about the content they have. They gotta pick up some really interesting IPs in order to compete with the Funimation and Crunchyroll mix. And they need to stop doing live action shows because live action shows are gonna fucking kill their goddamn momentum. Hopefully Netflix can notice this fact about the Crunchyroll and Funimation merger and hopefully they step up their game. I don't think it's gonna happen anytime next year or maybe not even the year after that. But soon down the road, we're gonna see some very interesting things come out and I'm all here for it. It's the capitalist idea that more competition is going to breed more good things. I don't know if I subscribe to that philosophy, but I mean, we can, we can see how it goes. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it so much and you liked this topic, go ahead and check the podcast potentially uh, right there. I think, maybe, I think it's right here. I don't know if there's a podcast out for it yet. I really have to see and I'm not 100% sure. And you can check out my next video right here if you really want to. Go ahead and click that video, check it out. I would appreciate it a lot. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Go ahead and do all those things. Go ahead and do all of those things. Because it makes me happy and we can see the shadow grow. I've been Mizi Kurosaki, the leader of the DJs, and I will see you guys in the next video.